Hello, everybody, again. Um, I'm Charlotta. This is Trisha. This is our second try at doing a live stream. We're going to talk about drafting systems. And this is hopefully, if technology is kind to us, it's yes. going to be a regular live with both of us where we're going to swap channels. So on the last Thursday of each month, we're going to be alternatively on my channel and then next month on Trisha's channel. And we're going to try out well, this week we're going to discuss drafting systems, which are different ways of creating your patterns. And the next month we're actually going to try it out. So that should be really excited, exciting. And I'm now, Trisha, why don't you tell people a little yeah. bit about yourself? Hey, can you hear me okay still? I can hear you perfectly. So I'm hoping we're now yeah. the time. Success! We're, we're hoping you found us again. We did try yeah. this. This is our first live together on YouTube. So welcome. Um, if you're new, oh, Yay, Beth, Beth is here. Hello, Laura. Fantastic. Hello. Oh, YouTube. good. We're starting to see people trickle in. Yes. Welcome. Welcome. My welcome. name is Trisha, owner of Creative Costume Academy. I am American, um, as opposed to Charlotte uh, <laughs> <Never had> <laughs> sure, living in, in England and yeah. over in Europe. Um, and I have a background of 20 years professional experience in the entertainment industry, making costumes for big theatrical productions. So that's where my pattern knowledge comes from. I teach now online. I have, um, two memberships, a private community, um, only open a couple times a year where we dive deep into to pattern making, um, and then I have another membership that's always open, Pattern Making Academy, um, which is wonderful. But here on YouTube, um, and actually over on Instagram, which is where we started this relationship. We met as <laughs> um, We have something called, in my world, called Tricky Thursday. So this will be part of my Tricky Thursday series, where we get to hang out with Charlotta for Tricky Thursday. So it's going to be a special Part of that at the end of every month, the last Thursday of every month, we'll go live together and talk about and share our pattern knowledge. Today, we're going to talk about the drafting systems. That's been a hot topic. Um, last night, I went live on TikTok and tried out one of them, and I have some insight that I learned. Um, it was really fun. And then, yeah, next week, we're going to, Charlotta and I are going to try one or or two of these Um and test them out too. So we're here to talk about these different systems, what they mean, what they are, pros and cons, if you want to try them. Um, yeah, so I'm excited. Yes. And I'm honored to be part of Tricky Thursday. Yes! And <laughs> um, so yes, um, yes, as um, Tusha always said, I'm, I, I'm living in Britain, I'm German, if you can your accent still and my background is pure, pure fashion design so it's always fantastic to talk to Trisha because we're both pattern cutting cutters from very different backgrounds so we always love comparing techniques and getting excited about other ways of doing it and I think drafting systems are a fantastic way of describing that because I've now delved into sort of seven different systems and you still end up as close every time but there's yeah. just so many journeys isn't it to achieving it's Close. It's kind of like what speaks to you, you know, what makes the most sense to you. Because there's a million different ways to do anything, really. Um, oh, Oklahoma. Welcome, Sharon. Oh, Sharon. Yes, I can, I can see lots of our members popping up. So it's lovely oh, to yes. see you, yes. uh, Erin. And, and Charlotta also has a pattern cutting yes. school, she forgot to mention. I'm not very good at this. <laughs> yes, so if you want to learn with me, have a look at my website, which is patterncutting.school and I've got a membership um I'm actually going to do a giveaway after this for my blog courses as well so have a look on Instagram you can win and, all my and blog are courses. you still doing your vintage course right now I'm doing it at the moment yes so that'd be the last time I'm doing it so I'm doing some new oh, stuff wow. but yes so um yes we had our second live and it's been oh, so that's Charlotta and I both love the vintage pattern making and the vintage patterns. So yeah. that's that's something else that we've always connected on. I'm wearing the vintage pattern masterclass. I'm wearing my chopper coach. Oh, and I love so that. It's so cold here. Yeah, it's like a tough, it's like a, what is it we call a shacket? Shacket, yeah. Yes, it's like a, because it's, like it's a just full So it's sort of inside, outside in the Britain because our heating is so expensive. So we're it's layering out. there right now. <laughs> yes. But, but we love being able to do this live, like we like to do these lives instead of just talking about 
things like we do in our classes and our teaching, but because we get to interact with you guys and, and answer any questions that you might have. So if you have any questions that come up, please don't be shy, pop them into the chat. We love um, chatting with you guys as well. It's just kind of a open forum for, for talking yes. about, about different things. And it's like a nice opportunity to hang out with people who, who yeah. are fe fellow who are also interested. Nerd, isn't it? <laughs> All up, yes. Welcome. You can be as nerdy as you want to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. We can, we can pattern nerd out is what I call it. Yes, I think yeah. my, my TikTok friends are like pattern nerds unite. And yeah. I had somebody come on and say, well, what, what makes how do I become a pattern nerd? And I said, well, the fact that you're here and you're interested in this pattern conversation, you're already in the club. Everybody's welcome. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So did you want to, how did yes, you want to I... start talking about the different yes. systems? Because Cheshire is going to come on this big pattern drafting system out there. So I looked at some more obscure ones and also cheap, um, cheaper um, vintage versions. So it's stuff which is reprinted. And the best source, actually, I'm going to start this one real one I have, which is called, which is a 1950s book. I think you can, you can pick it up for like a tenner or something. It's called Pattern Drafting and Grading. But oh, so it's cool. like a normal way of drafting your, I'm just going to try to, I think they have two versions. You can either, sorry, my, um, I had surgery, so my hands are slightly um, tricky at the moment, but they have two versions and one of them, so they got the normal version we all know, which is to draft a block. And then they got a special ruler, which I wanted to show you, which is right at the back. And this is from the 1950s. Does it have a name for the system, or it's no? It's just, actually uh... just called pattern cutting. I, I, it looks like a school book because you know how it's like. It might have been uh -huh. like, but look, that's got a special ruler, and you can basically oh, use that's that interesting. And you scale up the blocks, the, so you the got smaller the smaller blocks. Yeah, so you got special rulers for using for creating that, all the curves. And then you've also got a special sort of scaling up system, which I think is similar to the Lutolo you're going to talk about in a second. Yeah. But I think yeah. a lot of these drafting systems are sort of where Taylor has noticed something always works the same formula. So it's like the internet algorithm. It's somebody working out roughly, this is always works, right. it scales up. And then oh, it with it, but it's basically a computer, isn't it? A lot of these drafting systems, like a... Oh yeah, and I like to. So I forgot I have I have some other drafting systems that I learned how to use when I was in school, and they're I call them just drafts as opposed to like I think the Luterlo and the Magic Fit. Those are systems yeah. that are yeah. advertised like that. But um, when I was in school, we were given um, they I guess they are they're like the men's drafting systems and things like that. So just a little history about where some of these might have come from and maybe that book um back before measuring measuring like you guys have metric and we have imperial but that wasn't standardized until kind of recently um yeah. as far as like terms of measurement so back in the day with tailors um they would use maybe twill tape or something to get like this length of tape is your chest measurement. This length of tape is your, you know, arm measurement or your waist measurement. And they would have a collection of tapes that would be dedicated to that person. And then from those tapes, because there wasn't a standardized measurement system, they would use those tapes and like take a quarter of the chest measurement to to measure out the front of a jacket plus so much more. Um, and so they the tailors developed these systems as a way to draft up their patterns um, because there wasn't a standardized measuring um, measurement across th that everyone yeah. was agreeing to. Um, and so that's kind of how I think these started. And so they came up with their own set of instructions for take the chest times two, 
you know, plus a little bit or whatever, however they set it. So there's, there's those kinds of systems that are actually really cool because you input your measurement. Now we can input our measurements instead of having random tool tapes. Um, and then when you draft them up, when you plot these points in this specific instructions, then it comes up as the pattern that you're doing the draft for, but it fits perfectly because you're using those measurements and you're using the mathematics that they, that tailor or that system has come up with to create that by using your measurements to create that design that should fit you. So I think that's where it all started was like way back um, with old tailoring techniques. Yeah, I was researching a book as part of this life and they, some people called it the Chinese method as well. So oh. it'd be interesting whether it actually originates in China, that method of just always drafting from your measurements i definitely because i've been um i've got indian families so when you have your saris fitted mm -hmm. blouse, which are like a moulage but they come mm -hmm. and they measure you in three minutes and then they draft it and fits you perfectly which is an amazing skill yeah and they use something similar where they just use sometimes measuring tapes but quite often just like a tape and they sort of measure the key points and then just and then dra basically the draft the block every time isn't it but it has a style line to it yeah, yeah yeah so so it's it's when we're saying that we're drafting patterns um and those kinds of drafting systems it's taking measurements or taking um yeah taking measurements however <laughs> you're taking that measurement centimeters inches um and plotting points so usually i think when people think of pattern making, modern pattern making, pattern cutting, they think that the first thing they start with is drafting a bodice sloper or yeah. drafting a sloper from scratch. And um, that's how a lot of pattern making is taught. And then once you have that sloper, you take that sloper and you do what we call flat pattern manipulation, where you take that- Well, and pattern design, isn't it? So it's, I call it, I was just thinking, I call it drafting all the time. It's not actually- it's different kind yeah, of it's like manipulating things. something that already exists, whereas these systems are going back to um, kind of drafting, like you said, like like when you get a sari where you take a measurement and you're drafting it into a design already. Yeah. You're not taking yeah. something that exists and making that. Well, in some of them, because you were saying ha Haslam um, oh, is yes. maybe like that. Maybe I might like not be right. I, I'm going to ask people to chat that they know about it. Um, and Natalie just said, I've never heard of a Chinese system. And yeah, I've, heard it, I've never heard it until yesterday. And then two people in a book review mentioned it. So I'm going to get that book and see. Oh. <laughs> um, so, so I think the systems like Luterlo, and, and just so everyone knows, this is the Luterlo system. And this is actually, I've had it for a while. Somebody gave it to me. It's German to yeah. start. And there's also something called golden schnitt, which means the golden, you know, ratio. And that's golden part rule. Of, yeah, that's the, that's part of Lutolo as well. I think. Yes. So I think that like drafts is what I call them, like what we were just talking about in drafting systems, where you're plotting points into create a certain design is kind of where this idea maybe started. And mm -hmm. then there's the other more modern um, way that. I think Charlotta and I teach is where you start with a sloper that fits you already. And then we are changing the design to create the design we're looking for, starting with something that already fits. So that's another way. Luterlo has kind of found like the in-between of um, like, and I think some of these others too, the in-between of drafting from scratch, taking those, those measurements and plotting points and taking a, a finished block and manipulating it and changing it into a design. And they use the golden rule, which I think was actually developed by Da Vinci, yes. Leonardo Da Vinci. Or officially sort of, yeah, name, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> and, and, and it's based on the mathematical um, theory or principle that we are proportionate um, to our own body measurements so the 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 rule is i know i know some of them and and they are outlined here in the book and i wish i kind of knew them more off the top of my head but i know that like your head is typically oh, yes. an eighth of your height so if you knew how how you know long your head was 
eight and, and multiplied that by eight, that would be your total height. Sure. Um, and then fingertip to fingertip is also supposed to be your height. So using <laughs> those, <laughs> you want to, you want to try it. She's going to test it out. Yes. Um, no, it's so yes. is it correct? My, my my head measure my head a bit big because I'm not two meters or nearly seven feet. But yeah, I can actually sort of if I out a bit, it's probably correct roughly, isn't it? I mean, I always think of it like that part of it that is it when you're learning to... fashion illustration, you always draw a ten head figure as opposed to an yeah. eight head figure because it looks longer and leaner. So that's intentionally like stretching. I wonder if it's one to seven, so it's eight altogether, because. No, men, it wouldn't make sense. No, I don't know. So that's the that's the theory that the Luter Low system works on. So they have you take your chest or your bust measurement and your hip measurement, and by using those measurements, they um, give you this special ruler. So it comes with um, this is the total kit. You get some push pins, some tape, a marker, and this special ruler. And it gives you these little designs. So it has in this book is is what it is. I think there's almost 300 different designs of so all different versions. To... And then there's the patterns on the back. How is that different to normal centimeter ruler, Tricia? So the ruler is... It's a double-sided or something. It is. And it is just a, a, a regular centimeter ruler on one end. And then th this is the magic part. Right oh, I see. So that's how you. So you take up. your bust measurement. So I was a hundred, um, and then, so you find the hundred hole, and you have these little. So I was gonna make this pair of pants, except yeah. my pruner was out of ink. So if you want to make that pair of pants, then here's the pattern. You take your hip measurement, which actually mine's a little bigger. So, and this was a recommendation from Julian, who who was on our other <laughs> link. I don't know if he found us over here, but he said instead of using like the actual pattern from the book to Xerox it off so you can yes. cut these pieces apart, mm -hmm. which makes it a lot easier. I should have brought my pattern I did yesterday. But this little cross hatch, you tape it down onto a piece of paper and you Put, use the push pin to put your hip measurement right on that cross hatch, and then these little lines. See the little lines and Julianne points. Is here. And then you follow the angle to that number and plot a point, and then you rotate it and you plot all those points, and it scales it up mathematically to your body size using your hip or your chest measurement, depending on what whether you're doing a top pattern or a bottom pattern. So it doesn't assume we are, most of us have quite, diff, we don't have a proportionate, we assume we have a proportionate waist. So I guess that's where it would fall flat. It, it is, it's a proportion to your own body though, okay. as opposed to proportionate to the standards. Yeah, but still assuming we're all a certain hourglass figure rather than straight or, isn't it, I imagine? Um. Well, it's going off your hip, not your waist okay. measurement. But what I mean is it's assuming we then have a waist, isn't it? So right. You know, I'm thinking, I wonder if it would be really interesting to see you actually make it. And um... Yeah, I. so I am new to this. By no means am I a master. Um, it's very interesting, Natalie. And um, that's why I really wanted to try it. And I'm curious. I did learn a few things that I'm happy to share. Um, Julian of Julian Creates over on um, Instagram. Yeah. And I believe he has a YouTube and TikTok for sure too. But he's used this. I think he's made like I five or six. Like, yeah, and you can pop your um, YouTube in the comments and then people can follow you, I think. Or can I yeah, you as well? Yeah, because Julian does uh, sew alongs and stuff for his patterns. He, he's a Nomi pattern designer. So he's um, tried like five or six of these. And he said the fit comes out really well for him. Oh. Yeah. Um, and like maybe Julian is just the perfect dress size. Yeah. I mean, I don't think yeah. he's not an hourglass figure. You yeah. know, I know but that I, I, yeah. about Julian. Do um, they do men's wear and women's wear for this? They do. Oh, they yeah. do men's wear, women's wear. They have maternity wear. They have children's wear. I mean, and, and Luterloo is still in production. Yeah. So yeah. you can still purchase. Um, and once you have, you know, all the tools, the ruler, 
and the the marker and all all the tools uh you can just buy and i'm gonna get the name wrong julian was talking about them last night but um you can buy just the design packs okay um, I have some. yeah and and yeah. like pick the new design and i think you get like 200 or 300 designs yeah. um Julian just said that he yes, said he's surprised they always fit him, but he did. He said they work really well. And I was checking. So I didn't do this pattern. Let me see if I have the pattern um, that I did do. I did a hoodie pattern, like a sweatshirt hoodie it was the pattern that I drafted last night. That was my first attempt. Um, so it's oversight. It's not a fitted yeah. garment. Um, and I was checking my measurements because one thing that I noticed and I was using my gridded paper, um, that my center back and my center front were not on the grid. So when I went to mark, you know, my grain, yeah. I was like, well, I know it's gotta be parallel to my yeah. center because I, I'm used to drafting them yeah. from scratch. So that was interesting to me. And I don't know why that happened. Um, but I think it's just because I'm going center out as opposed to like, usually I start with the center and go, <laughs> um, so that might be, so that's one thing that I noticed was making sure I knew how to get my grain line. Yeah. So I guess it's one of the systems, but you have to have a certain amount of understanding already, isn't it? Well, one thing I will say, just like any kind of pattern making, is that any of these systems that you use, you have to have a basic knowledge of sewing construction yeah. because there's no sewing instructions anywhere in these systems. So that's another thing that um, if you're new to sewing, this might not be the best thing to no. start with. But if you're, if you've been sewing for a little bit, you do have a basic understanding of how to put clothes together. I feel like this is kind of a good bridge between drafting from scratch and, and using a purchased pattern. So it's kind of like, and, and because when you buy commercial patterns, those don't fit either, right? Yeah. You're going to have to yeah. do some yeah. cutting you fit one fit, You have one step less with this, isn't it? Um, I'm going to share a vintage version, version of this. Yeah. Similar system in it. But I just, I had a thought about this. Do you think, you know how in the mid-century, 50s, 60s, a lot of sort of department stores or like in different countries would copy like big styles. Do you think that's where Lutalo comes from? But it would be sort of sent out to small, like even like tailors and stuff, but then you could copy what's in fashion. I wonder. I don't know. It's possible. I think the Luter Low goes back to the 30s, the late yes. 30s. I just I, I want to do a bit more research where it actually comes from. Or maybe even you know when you have factories in different countries before you had digital yep. patterns and stuff, if you wanted in your shop everything to look the same. Yeah, like that, like that, it guarantees you, you get exactly the same pattern each time in different in different sizing. Yeah, maybe. And I guess it's also a really nice way of grading up. So whether you're doing clothes for your whole family or like a group of friends, yeah. you could actually draft the same design for lots of different people. And they had and they had the cool thing about this book, like I said, this was gifted to me. So I don't know where it came from originally. Um, but there's like full three piece suits. There's menswear. There's women's wear. There's a few children's. But it, I mean, there's like dresses and jackets. Yeah. And like there's menswear. Um, like there's bathing suits in here. Couple bathing yeah. Designs. I mean, it's, it's there's really quite intensive, you know. But that's why I thought it might be so for for a professional setting where you want to copy certain styles and you want you know make them on your own fabrics, but you want to make sure it's always identical, isn't it? Yeah. Here it is. Here's the hoodie that I did. Oh, Erin is saying I have a fam fa fabulous goldish knit from the 1950s. Would like to share some of that. That'd be fantastic if you put it on Instagram. We'd love to share it. Yeah. Um, uh, sure that might be similar. But I, when I started researching, there's so many systems in each country, isn't it? And Rachel is saying some of the systems, like Surefit Design, offers additional instructions and resources to teach users how to make pattern and fitting adjustments. Yes, so and there is some in here too in Luderlo. What they do say to start with is a basic waistcoat, a basic uh, vest. And then test the draft. Okay. I could give you the, the smaller pattern and, and, and blow it up 
grade it up and then test the fit. So if there's, you know, shoulder adjustments yeah. and, or length adjustments, that would be something that, that would always happen no matter which style of pattern you're doing. So, um, that's something to do if, if, if you feel like maybe you're asymmetrical or I know Rachel who was on with us last night, she was saying that she thought because she had a fuller bust, um, and her shoulders were maybe a little sloped that, that, that she was always having to maybe make a slight adjustment in her shoulders. So that it could, cause it would be the same because the proportions would grade up the same. Yeah. It would be the same adjustment, no matter yeah. what pattern style you were going to. So that would be a way to test what adjustments you might yeah. need. So it's a bit like a sewing pattern, but you can make all of them from one book, isn't it? And you, right. it fits you in like, say the bust perfectly. And you just need to right. do the adjustment rather than doing full bust, every single adjustment. Each every, time. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's and a little more. Natalie says there's also an Italian system called Sitam. And I wanted, to, I found this, it's a website called Mrs. She's American. I always pronounce these names wrong. De Pew, I want to pronounce it French. It's a vintage pattern shop. Some of you might have seen it already. Oh, um, wow. But this is a similar vintage system from, it's either Italian or um, French. And again, you have something similar to you where you lay out the pattern it's a tiny pattern and when you have a special mm -hmm. ruler so this is only eight dollars so i'm gonna actually buy it for our next life in a month yeah and then maybe you can do it our loot and i will do this and we can compare how it works yeah out. that sounds like fun yeah we can yeah. do something like that miss de pew de pew yeah so it's all french isn't it yes <laughs> <laughs> and natalie yeah, she, actually but if you're interested in vintage drafting system she collects them and she actually offers some of them on sale on her instagram but there's some amazing sort of Victorian tailoring systems she has, which is similar to what oh, you wow. say. Like, we have like 10 different rulers and you all put it together. Um, and Aaron, Aaron says she's got a couple. Of, yeah, patterns, I imagine. Yeah, French are really nice. Do they work, Erin? Did you try one of these out? Um, I want to try them all. Why can't we French. just sit at yeah. home and test all of these patterns? Yes. <laughs> oh, patterns, yeah. Hey, she patterns has got the Haslam as well. And Haslam, Haslam, yeah. That has like a special ruler. But I think that's just often just to draw the curves for when you're not, you know, like we would probably know roughly how to draw a curve. Which, if Julian's uh, still here, he had maybe it was a perfect fit. No, his was from Dusan. I was going to say he had a fancy ruler that came yeah. with one of these systems that he was using, and it was great because it was a curve. Um, yeah. but it had, um, seam allowance. So like, like a line Ooh. that would be five eighths from the, the edge so that you could easily add your seam allowance. Cause that's the thing with Luterlo is there's no seam allowance included on the patterns. Oh, so, so you, you have need to add those. Like you're drafting, like proper drafting. Yeah. 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 Yes. And and Julianne is saying the same. Yeah. Mr. Pew has other drafting systems. Really interesting to look at and she's oh, got a block yeah and she got a haslam support system as well which is like like a block where you can find out more information so it's really good um and because it's like compared i think for lutalo i found they're like a hundred pounds in the uk so haslam is no the lutalo but you are using Luter. it might mm -hmm. be cheaper in the U in the us but here it's incredibly expensive so um Ha um, Mr. Depew might be a, you point it out yourself so it might be quite a nice way of trying out these systems and see how they work yeah 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 I think Luterloo is still a little bit pricey I think we were talking about um, the prices of them like I said I don't know because I didn't purchase this one but uh, they, I think that Julian was saying that they're about $100 for the pack the new pack so okay. And that do you need to? But you get like three hundred designs, you know. Yeah. And, and you saw there was there was several views yeah. on each design, so it's quite a quite a, a lot, even for even though that sounds like a lot of money. I mean, you, you get quite a bit for that. Yeah, he has around a hundred pounds basically, I and mean, if you go second hand, um, yeah, it's and about hundred. Some pounds. people you can find them on eBay and things yeah. like that too. Yeah, because you have to be careful because the cheap ones are always the supplements. So it's it's like Haslam, like the original yeah. one to buy is really expensive, and then you can buy all these sort of. Um, so, and you were saying Haslam is they have you draft up a block, and then. Yeah, they have like a fun a foundation drafting. 
which okay. I think is, but then they sort of do a mixture. They do some you draft from nothing, like Belutolo, and then others you seem to draft of a block. So it's sort of a mixture um, of the both of them. I guess it's they always chosen what's faster. Is it faster to draft for more tricky designs, actually faster to draft from nothing, rather than doing yeah. block adaptations if you're doing step by step? Um, but then they also have like where you draft from the foundation garment. Because I started looking at the the supplements, they're quite cheap, but you always need the first book. So right, right. outlet. Okay. So does Miss Depute, does she give um, reviews or, or talk about them? I there? think she's got like a blog, maybe a Facebook group where you can get support. Um, okay. Yeah, she's been at it a while. So I think she's quite, um, it looked really good what she had. Um, so it might be quite nice sort of, um, I'm going to put yeah, if you're curious um, in my Instagram. Ones. Yeah, it's quite a good resource for different um, patterns. Um, but of course, but if you're buying vintage, one of the things is um, quite often they tell you the French and they offer translations, but it's probably a bit intimidating, at, as Aaron said, if you're to get that send in the post, it's so, yeah, or PDF and you have yeah. to put it all yeah, out and sure. try to make sense of it. I know Julian was saying that he had some Japanese, I know he has some Japanese uh, drafting systems. Oh yeah, they do lots as well, don't they? I've I've not tried those, but I love. Like I said, I just want to play with all of them all day long and try them all. <laughs> um, I wanted to share. Um, so Haslam's one that I've heard a lot, um, and then this is another one that was really popular when I did a post about all that I have. So Dusan, oh, and that's a color sure. fit, and a lot of people resonated and said, "Oh my God, I took a class with Dusan, you know, in the seventies with my mom." Um, so it's a similar thing. I haven't really um, dove into this either. I have tried. There's another one that I have here. Here it is. This, I think that, yeah, this is also Dusan's. It's the perfect pant. So you, you, you get, you get like a, a foundation. Um, yeah. You get like a base. So it's similar to Luter Low in a way that you, but it's not a tiny pattern. It's a, um, it's kind of a bigger pattern. And then they have the measurements here. Like oh, if you're, so oh, then so you grade like out, so it's like grading pattern. it. Yeah. Or you know how on sewing patterns you get the dotted lines. It's, it's sort of that thing. Right. It? So it's like doing the grading for you, I feel oh. like. Oh. That's quite different in size, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So I have tried it for the pants um, and it worked okay. I did it for a customer and I, I was trying to get a good fit with her. And, and to be honest, it wasn't super successful. <laughs> um, that was when I tried it the last time, but it comes with like, you can practice yeah. doing adjustments and things like that on here. And he used to teach classes in person and it, it's also got, you know, fancy Ooh, ruler. Yes. And I think that, I wonder if this is like Julian's ruler where this is like five, eight, seven inch. Looks like it, doesn't From it? the edge where you can yeah. easily mark, you know, your, your seam allowance. So it's basically like a pattern master, you know, the ruler I use um, a lot. And look, this is your fisheye dart, like a little fisheye dart oh, template. Yeah. Um, and then this, what, what I thought was really cool about the Magic Fit is uh, there are these um, for different cups, bus cups. Oh, that is cool, yeah. So it's like a dart, basically, like a dart tool, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. So, and then there's instruction in this, there's instructions of how to use all this stuff, yeah. which I haven't dove into, but it came all in this set, kind of. Um, and he talks about making, yeah, Julian says that his is the plastic version of this cardboard that I have, the cardboard rulers that I have. So it, but he it, was pulling it out and using it to add his seam allowance really quickly. Oh, on, shut on off at you, man. I, I know, and I'm using my pattern ruler, which I love. And but I'm isn't it similar to this to a certain degree? It yeah. is. I think the, you know, the, the fancy gimmick with these yeah. are that you don't have to move um, it around, measure, up, measure out your seam allowance. So you could lay this here and just okay. kind of yeah. draw it in quickly. Yeah. yeah. But that's if you like five eighths inch seam allowance, which I rarely do. Yeah, <laughs> I use half inch or one inch. Um, but yeah, so that's that's a whole different system. Yeah. So again, I think with all of these systems, it's it's 
you know, find the one that makes the most sense to you or like see if you can try something out and, and maybe, you know, um, it could be a faster way. I think the cool thing about the Luterlo that I found last night when I was doing it, it was really quick. Like once you set up your little pattern and you did, you know, mark your points, it's just like connecting the dots. It yeah. went really quickly. Um, yeah. I think we were chatting and, and we did go for a couple hours, but I had a finished seam allowance. Oh, I added a facing. I had a pocket. You know, it was done. Yeah. You know, in probably an hour. If I, I was just doing like, you know, when you've done your, your designing on your working pattern, when you just trace it through, it's like that, isn't it? You literally yeah. don't have to think because you're just following their rules. Right, right, exactly. And like I said, I was testing. One thing I did notice, my shoulder seam was off. So I would definitely recommend walking your seams. That's my pattern teacher. A <laughs> little note in there, always walk your seams and true up, you know, your patterns. But it could be if you're not wanting to have to learn all of the foundations and the rules and how to add a collar and like you just want to make that design. I think if if you're finding you know, the fit adjustments that you need to make, or, um, you know, you find that the fit works really well for you when you, when you're doing these, these blow ups, um, it could be a quick way to get all these different designs without having to know, um, you know, all of the, the intense pattern stuff that we know true with Luterlo. Yes. Yeah, true yeah. with Luterlo, <laughs> um, with any pattern system, I would always check, check yeah. your, um, and I imagine also because it's such a tiny starting pattern, if you just slightly off where you pin, the center front and center back will end up slightly off, as you said, isn't it? And this is another, I just wanted to share this quickly because I think this is very similar to Luterlo. This is the perfect fit, which is different. Ooh, nice illustration. Fit. Looks very 70s. Yes. Um, this was also gifted to me. And it has, it has rulers in it as well um and then here are so it works similarly to that as well yeah and um suzanne she just said it's based on a she took a finnish um pattern course based on a german method on the own own measurements so i wonder if that's sort of related to lutalo as well yeah and then and then it does talk about like changing up different uh, style yeah. lines so it's this one seems like kind of a combination of yeah. like the looter low and taking and making adjustments. Yeah, so then drafting your own as well. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, very great. I was gonna share a completely different um system and I'm not sure if you've seen it. This is I got one of Mrs. Depew again. It's where you get like a chart and ah, you, yeah. just, you use basically gridded paper and you blow it up to your own measurements and then you just trace it dot by dot again. And this is a French system, but I was talking to Trisha earlier because I'm slightly, I can't move as much. I have a fantastic book series called... <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's incredibly heavy. But I fun. want everyone to acknowledge Charlotta's dedication to sharing this <laughs> kind of knowledge fantastic. with you. It's because like of her, her hurt wrist and she's yes. still trying to show you this book and share <laughs> um but but it is it's a book series basically for you know women who got married and it tells you everything from buying a perfect house building oh furniture building very furniture. 1950s isn't it yes yeah basically how to survive <laughs> um but they've got a whole drafting system they they developed especially for the housewife and they use a mixture of your own measurements and a grid system. So I really want to try that out to That's draft the block. So it's not just grading up um, no, the scale. Like it's not just scaling up. It's it's um it, it's introducing measurements as well, huh? Yeah, I'm gonna try to show you. It's sort of a bit like how we draft our bodices, but they simplified it by introducing. God, this is oh my goodness. <laughs> Oh, interesting. But I think you you can basically adapt it to any size. So I, I want to look into it a bit more. It's very, you know, I love these 1950 books. They're very condensed. But basically, you just have yeah. to repeat it step by step and work it out. So it's a bit like a draft. I always find different ways of drafting your blocks really interesting as well. Because Yes, that's true. That's true. Um, and, and just a sidebar away from... Um, 
drafting systems. I'm teaching a class on, yeah, she yeah, does. Need Natalie, you, need, <laughs> you need an assistant, Charlotte. Oh, Here's your daughter helping. helping. Yes, yeah. Well, I, was, I was telling Trisha before I left, I had, I had, because I suddenly found I can't open doors in our house because we got these twisty doors. So I had to make my daughter go around the whole house and open every single door for me so I can actually go into rooms. Goodness. Thanks. So, well, we commend your commitment to sharing with yes, us. Yes, to Tricky Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> to Tricky Thursday. Yes, the Tricky yes, Thursday commitment. Tricky, it was Tricky Hands. <laughs> um, Making it even trickier. Um, oh, we are taking questions. Yeah, we um, are. Absolutely. Did you want to... Were you, to, did I, were you talking about something just now? You said um, something. No, I, w I was I was going to say, um, and you can see that question. They only come up for me for a few seconds yes, and then no, they go yeah, away. So I want to make sure we can get yeah. back to the question. I was just going to say, um, speaking of drafting uh, different bl blocks in different ways, um, I'm teaching a class sharing about Shingo Sato and a little bit about the mm -hmm. pattern magic. Yeah. And she does her she block. She has a block, doesn't she? It's different than Yeah, it, and it's very different how she's done it. Um, have I got two bus stops? It's, it's, I'm trying to see. I wish I would have thought about this before I jumped on. Um, it's probably because this is the second one. Let me see if it's in this one. She does it where it's laid out flat so you can see the darts like between the front and back bodice as well. Oh, yes. Yeah. And it's, has it got three darts? Or they make it some, some different darts than we do. It's sort of yes. very Japanese, very precise compared to us. Yes. <laughs> um, let me see. I'm not finding it quickly. I just remembered it actually from when I worked through this book the last time, but I'm not finding it quickly right now. It's at the back, I think. One is of it them. in the back? Yeah. There's one oh. in the front yeah, and one at the back. Yeah, here. So, like, this is how she's drafting up her yeah. dart. So you can see, like, that's the side seam. Yes. Dart. And then, and then oh, I think... Oh, she's got two back darts, hasn't she? Yeah. She's got a waist and a bust dart. And then she does have the back dart there. And I think she talks about how you swing... Um, yeah, here. How you and manipulate the it. from that and close yeah. it up to get that curve. And Tyke is saying, "What do you think about the pattern pattern magic?" It's a it's a good book. I love the pattern yeah. magic books. I it's, think it's, 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 this is definitely a more advanced. Yeah. It's not being new to pattern making. Actually, save it up because I taught eighteen year olds for eight years, and. They didn't have any sewing or pattern making experience. Unless I once made them do one of the styles in four hours, draft it and stitch it. They did some wow. of them, they cried, but they all got it done. I was going to say, you cry. It's but, like, you can do it, but that's uh, cool. Um, <laughs> it's a challenge, but I think it's very clearly explained. So, it is, um, it is. You have to, yeah, sort it's of, very mathematical, though, I feel yeah. like, if, if your brain is more that way, whereas... <laughs> Shingo Sato is what I'm sharing about, and he's a little bit more kind of the way I like to teach too, more intuitive, like drawing it on. Dra yeah, draping, isn't it, basically? Yeah, it's more of a draping. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, no, yeah Natalie's laughing at my teaching style. <laughs> they got into good <laughs> universities by the end of it. They're very happy, maybe. but They, they learned a lot, I'm sure. Yeah. At the end, they were happy, but maybe not in the middle of the process. <laughs> After I left. Erin said she would have cried. So what was the question? I want to go back to that. Question. Okay. Um, she said, but it's not a drafting system question, but we can answer it anyway. What would be the best way to stitch an A-line skirt, um, two facings, two pattern pieces together, in your opinion? I'm currently overlocking both, then just stitching and pressing. Um, if it's an A-line skirt, you need to put your zip in first, and then it's just seams. I have, um, you mean before stitching together? I do a or, zip. I do or, a zip. I do a zip seam first. Oh, the zipper seam yeah. first. Yeah. Yes. Because and then, then, then you're your, not fighting. Yeah, and you can add your either add your facing at the end, or you can add it separately to each front and back. Front and back. That's yeah. true. Yeah, depending how you want to put it together. Yes. Yeah. And then um, somebody, I forget his name or her name, uh, asking if I've tried the pattern magic. I have actually tried several of the pattern magic. Um, yeah, yeah Heike, Heike said that. Um, yeah. 
I've tried lots. They're good. Um, they well, I would say I would always adapt them slightly. If you copy them, you saw when they first came out on lots of catwalks, you could see we had an intern who read the books and they just stuck it on randomly. Um, so it's sort of, I think it's one of those where you learn the technique and when you adapt it. Um, and when I did make up the, I think I only made one in full scale size. The others I did in half scale. Yeah. So it wasn't, for me, it was more to just try the, the, and the design. The whole, the whole book is half scale. So, you know, something right. which looks cute in that size might look a slightly. Mine, yeah, not so size. great. Um, and, somebody was asking about your yes. wrists again. I had um, carpal tunnel surgery and I'm one of a few mad people who has both wrists done at the same time. So um, I'm slightly limited at the moment, but hopefully we'll be back to, in March yeah, to drop. He's going to heal up, get them both healed up at the same time and be this back. This is time work. for our um, live draft along, which is on the 23rd of February, isn't it? Yes. Something like last Thursday of the it's month. The last Thursday of February will be, yes. we're going to do a draft. We're going to pick one of these drafts to do. Um, so you'll be healed up by then. Yeah, hopefully. hopefully. Yeah. I'll hopefully. You down. Um, I do. Oh, Did yes. you have another one you want to share? I want to share. No, about these well, two. if you share that, because mine is still in the library, I didn't get it yet. Yes, no, no. housework for me. Nothing. Yes. I'm just sitting there. I need, I need some, if you can recommend any podcasts, because I just realized I'm just going to not be able to do anything. So I need nice things to listen to. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Lots of pod podcasts that yeah. are good for sure. Um, I wanted to share about these Janet yeah. Arnold books. There's several. I have three of them. This is the second one. Um, so this is circa 1860 to 1940. Um, the first one is 1660 to 1860. So they're different order. time periods. Yeah. And, and the third one is 1560 to 1620. So what these books are, um, these are actual garments like from the Smithsonian that have been dissected in a way so you get pictures line drawings of them and then you get the actual pattern pieces on a scale grid. on a uh -huh. on a grid so this would not be good for drafting up to be in your size necessarily it would draft up to be whatever this original garment was yeah and, and natalie said she loves jen and arnold because natalie is a costume designer from australia so Yes, Instagram. It's Natalie C. Stoss, which possible to pronounce for me. But um, if you, yeah, she she's a she's done lots of dresses. Yeah, Natalie does some amazing stuff with costumes. So, I have a there's question. also some some historical, you know, information of how the clothing is built. But these are really wonderful. I feel like I've tried one at one point. I think I did, but um. So Do this they, is a matter of scaling them up and it's yeah. more to like learn how they were put together yes. at the time. Do I tell you what size each model was to begin with? So for example, it's like a five foot woman, this both, you know. I'm not sure. They do give like a little um, information about the garment, but I'm not sure that it says what size it's for. So it's a bit like basically potluck who but the original size of the garment yeah. was isn't it? I mean I, I would assume most of them are tiny to be honest. <laughs> but I think it's really cool to see the um Natalie C sews. There you go. Uh yeah go check out Natalie. She's wonderful. But I think that it's it's like like these bustles, you know. Yeah. Um, it where you have the layout of what the pieces look like and it's a matter of making it fit in the waist because obviously yes. you know and making your bustle your underneath your understructure um fit you but it's really I, fascinating to see how things were put together yeah i think it's more about actually how you understand i would then probably draft them for my own blocks but it's just to know what what your pattern with the pieces to end up like. this, yeah and how many yeah. you need and i was gonna say i think this these books were incredibly expensive for a while, but I think they have just reissued them cheaper. The the Janet Arnold's. Yes. Um, yeah, they are pretty pricey. No, I um, think they've just made they've just brought them out again, and they're amazingly they? cheap. And there are six of them, I believe. I only have yeah. three, but there's there's six. And again, they were gifted. Being a pattern nerd, I get lots of lovely pattern 
nerd gifts that I love and cherish. Um, I think I got one when I graduated. I think I got two of them when I graduated from school. Oh, so basically, it's called the school of his his the school of historical dress. If you basically Google Janet Arnold, they reviewed mm -hmm. all the books, and I'm hopefully oh, they're current. They're all in stock. Is reprinting them, Natalie saying? Yes. Says, yeah. The oh, yeah. School of historical dress yeah. is reprinting them. Are you gonna buy them in London if you're lucky? Yeah, I think she's. That's where she's from. Is from London. Yeah, I couldn't. Um, Actually, I have an exhibition, so I might have to go there. They're 40 pounds, basically. So if you're in the UK, you can get them for 40 pounds rather than for, um, I think, uh, an eBay again, and like quite expensive and stuff. So, oh, and that's what he says there's updates and color photos. So that's great. Ooh, that's kind of nice. But I actually quite like it that the book is sort of quite old fashioned, isn't it? It's like all the hand drawn writing and stuff. Yes, yes. I really, I really like that. And I did want to say something about, you know, I was saying the understructure of having the bustle that's made to fit your waist. And, and they did, you know, back in this time, incorporate lots of pleats and things to, to adjust sizing because it was, you know, um, so much more expensive yeah. to create clothing and so you hung on to things longer and so they made you know like the tears on skirts were because you know when the women yeah. got as they grew older they just kind of added more on so there there's a lot of that kind of information is in there as well um and then another thing I wanted to mention that that Julian brought up when we were doing Luterlo last night is he's a collector. I, I'm going to call him a collector of lots of things, machines and pattern systems. Um, but he was saying, you know, he had, he pulled them out and we were all drooling, but the 1930 um, Luter Lowe, the original book, yeah. Ooh, I, can imagine. Look, I know in the forties, 1940s. And he really likes the, I think the sixties and seventies are, are the, the, the decade that he really likes. And he's made up a couple of these patterns in the different decades and different time periods. And he's found, you know, even though they always fit the ease, the garment ease is different as you move through different yeah, time periods. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, wearing the correct undergarments, you know, back in the day, girdles and yeah. bustles and things like that, um, adjust the fit and make the garment ease different as well. So he's saying like the later looter lows kind of go along with what was ever modern at yeah. the time, as far as like how, the ease that's built in and things like that. So it's, 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 it's taking that into consideration as, as well yes. as the fit and how it, how it, but that's the same even for drafting your own blocks from different work um, books. I've got all the, um, this is like a 19, it's originally 1970s. I think the minutes with Aldrich and her menswear blocks are very seventies. If you draft very them, 70s, like, yeah. men put them on, they like, they say, Oh yes, you need to, yeah, you're straight out of the 70s. It's really interesting how, yeah, the ease amount changes the fit and everything. And I'm and, sure, like, even with the pants, like, how high that waist yeah. comes and, and how it hugs, you know, in the hip area, yeah. I'm sure, is, is different. Or how the pant hangs. Yeah. Um, or the trousers hang, I should say. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you're on my channel today, so you're speaking British. That's right. We're on your channel. we got to speak I'm British English. practicing my American <laughs> slang for next time. No American um, slang. <laughs> um, and Claire saying with the Janet Arnold one, you can, they're all being updated. So you can get everything but number three and four new now. So that's really good sort of stuff to get into if you're interested in historical fashion. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And and if you are interested in making historical clothing, um, they're great resources because it really shows you not just the outside, what it looks like, but the inside and like the ties and the understructure. Yes that it creates that silhouette. So if you're into reproduction sewing and, and, and that kind of world, those are, I mean, and I got those when I was in school for costuming. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And talk, that, talking of different ways to getting to the same point, um, if you're my membership, I've got a new guide for tomorrow. And I'm literally just looking on dolman sleeves and grown on sleeves. And I've sort of included about six different books, I think, and how they draft dolman sleeves. And it's like everybody oh, does it differently. You think it's like amazing, isn't it? How all that yeah. knowledge. And that's that's what I think. Off. I mean, I think you need to find what resonates 
with you because there's no, and that was something else I pointed out when I was drafting my pattern last night is I did the hoodie, but of course I can't ever do just the, the pattern that comes the way it comes. I have to change it up. Um, but I'm adding ribbing to the cuffs in the bottom and I added a pocket, you know, I wanted like yeah. that, that hoodie or jumper yeah. pocket. Yeah. That's very normal. Um, and I, I would normally maybe reference like a hoodie that I had in my closet, but since I was on the live, I didn't want to do it. So I was like measuring on myself, you know, and, and I just want to mention, you know, there's, there are rules that will help you to achieve the, the look that you're going for, like a grown on sleeve or a dolman, but you have to use what works on your body. Um, and so rules, you know, they, they can be used lightly. Um, you know, use, I think pattern making to be a good pattern maker, a good, good pattern cutter, you have to use a bit of intuition. Um, and so, you know, look at yourself on your body and be like, mm, I want my pocket to be about like that. I want it to be, you know, and just go for it and, and don't feel like you have to find what's the rule of how big a pocket should be, or is, you know, yeah. needs to oh, be yeah. from here or there like 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 there's a, a a rule that you have to follow you know um i think that if you're getting into pattern making and pattern cutting you're kind of intentionally that's why we're doing it is to make yeah. it work for us or to make it in the design that we we like so don't be afraid to just try something and 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 um you know use what you think might work for you and that's why we're always big about making mock-ups and testing yeah. out um, to make sure they look that way that you like it. Yeah, because I was going to say, um, of course, if you're making for industry, it has to always be the same. So pockets don't move in and up and down on the same pair of trousers each season. Although some brands aren't very good, but that's the whole beauty sure. of making your own is that you can experiment and find exactly the right fit for you and pick just the bits you like and yeah, make a trial and then it might not work. And yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or you actually, I never. I'm drafting. I'm sort of. I, I'm one of those people who look at clothes. And then you were saying, "Ooh, actually, I found a new way of doing short colors. I want to share with my membership soon and on YouTube." And you know, you like, oh, you know, when you've been doing this for twenty years. Now I've seen twice different way of doing it. So I'm thinking, "Ooh, really good to try." Yeah, yeah. I, I remember making um, how I make my welt pockets. I learned from taking a pair of pants apart at oh, Jersey yes. Boys. <laughs> yes. I was like, "How did they do this?" Yes, and I, I liked it so much. And that's kind of now how I always do welt pockets. But yeah, yeah, you're always learning and being open to learn as well. Yes, totally. Good. Yeah, Natalie's just saying proportion of your own body is really important. Yeah, because I think I imagine that's the only thing with the Lutolo, it will be the fashion, like like Julian was saying, the fashion of each decade. So if you know, right. like, I don't, like, this is very 40s, so I've done a slightly dropped shoulder, but I'm actually not, a, I'm used to it now, but in general, I'm sort of, you know right. what your body suits, yeah, suits better. Yeah. Um, oh, I think... Um, yeah, and he says saying we reprinted them color, so it must be Janet Arnold. So it'd be quite interesting to see the photos in color, I imagine. Yeah, absolutely. Good. But yeah. so, um, so could you tell people about in a month's time what's yeah. going to happen? Wait, month's time we're gonna we're gonna test out Trisha's Trisha's YouTube channel as well. That's right. It'll be over on my YouTube channel, so you can find me at Creative Costume Academy, same as all my socials. Yeah. It's in the description as well. So you can just yeah. click on there and subscribe Link. so you don't. And I'll schedule it ahead. This is this is new to me. Charlotte, Charlotte has got a little bit more uh, YouTube knowledge than I do, but I'm learning. I'm a fast <laughs> learner. I'm dedicated. <laughs> so I'll schedule and it um, just like Charlotte did for this one so that, that we will know ahead of time. And we're going to do um, a little bit different stream here and not go directly through YouTube. So maybe that will give us more options of um, you're saying we can do four. Yes. So we can do it over the yeah. camera. And, uh, yeah. So you can see a little faces of us, but then also see us drafting at the same time. And and we'll be able to do um, it on the computer as well, because I'm having to do yeah. this on my phone so that we could do it together for some yeah. reason. Yeah. But with you screen yard, we could do it on the computer. So that. Oh, and Laura, be... Laura is saying much better on here on Insta. So that's, yeah, oh, I agree. Good. Yeah, I can, because I we'll can actually see be you, Patricia, to... because the chat doesn't sort of. 
you know, obscure your face, such as it. <laughs> yes, that's true too. Yeah, I guess actually you should tell people because if you're watching on the laptop, of course, we're in the normal YouTube manner, but Tisha and I are on the phone, so we are above each other. Yeah, uh, yeah, we, like we look closer. like we are on Instagram, like, but but we can see each other, and we don't, we're not yeah. obscured by comments. Um, but and being able to do it on the computer, I'll be able to have my overhead camera, yeah. so we can do. Um, we're we're gonna try out one of these drafting system so that'll happen over on my channel it'll be the same time same time different place <laughs> same day same people. Uh, next year oh natalie's saying she prefers youtube too well good yeah so my instagram friends weren't happy about me trying out different platforms but i mean we want to share the love we want to make it better and 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 you know share more about it and you can uh, yeah youtube you can forward and all that sort of stuff much easier isn't it uh, yeah yeah. Definitely. So we're 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 gonna we're gonna do it and this will be a regular thing. This one, yes. you know, this little series is about drafting and do we wanna are we gonna take a poll on what system? Yes, she so of course Trisha has got the Lutolo and I will buy the French system of Mrs. Depew, but then of course you could we could also try Janet Arnold. Yeah. Um, yes, and somebody saying, "Will you address the cost of a different system?" We've done it a bit in the beginning because basically, yeah. Lutolo is expensive. Janet yeah. Arnold can be expensive, and if you look at Mrs. De Depew, she has lots of PDFs of historical ones, which are a bit more affordable. And I do know that Rachel, who was with us last night um, on TikTok, I think she's with us. Is, is she here? I don't. Her, her handle is different. It's not. Okay. It's her name. Um, so it might be the same Rachel. Um, but I thought she would be at work. But anyway, she was saying she found her Luter Low package um, by diving down Pinterest holes, <laughs> oh. um, and she actually found a um, like report. printouts, like PDF printouts. Actually, um, yeah. There's lots of Facebook groups who, yeah, basically have them. Yeah, but, the but the, thing, the tricky thing herself. with Luterlo, um, and Eileen, I think she was saying that she jumped in late. Well, this will be safe, yes. so you'll be able to go back to the beginning. Yes. Um, these are still, this is the Luterlo system that we're talking about. It's still in print, like they're still making more patterns. So I think that's why it's a little bit more pricey because they're still in production. They're still um, making this and adding to it all the time. So so it's available. You can buy it at probably looterlow.com or whatever. Um, but if you're trying to get a deal, I mean, I think that you can find them on eBay um, and some other things. Just be mindful. Make sure that you definitely have the ruler. Yeah. So um, maybe you could actually buy the cheapest version you can get with a ruler, even if it's not like the decade you like, and then just stock up on the supplements. On the designs, and maybe you can find the PDFs and things because like that. Because I imagine the ruler, Julia might have the answer, the ruler didn't change. It's just how the paper patterns are drawn. Yeah, even Julian's the one that he had uh, from the very first edition, mm. like the 1938 or 1939 that he had. It was the same it was the you know i think it was cardboard as opposed yeah. to the plastic that it is now and it, but it still had the numbers and 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 how you put it in so yeah, yeah. It, it was just a an older version of yes, the same yeah. ruler yeah so that's great because then you have you can basically access a hun nearly 100 years of drafting ideas yeah. isn't that yeah yes and go through all the decades that's and and the the uh, i guess Julian was saying last night about Haslam is they only, they really cater towards women's wear. They only do women's yeah. wear. And that's the great thing about Luterlo is that they have men's wear and they have children's wear and they have a, a wider range. It really seems like. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think Haslam was sort of, um, potty morph for people drafting for themselves. Yeah. 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 I always, yeah, but yeah. Good. So we will put out some polls on Instagram and let you know where, everywhere what we're doing. Actually, you can put some polls on YouTube as well. Um, yeah. Well, and I guess I have to um, maybe if I am going to do Luter Low, I guess I can do Luter Low. I could do. Um, or we could both try out the Mrs. Depew because we can. We could um, both try out Mrs. Yeah, Depew. I could try, you know, the Magic Fit oh, yeah. system. So yeah, we'll do some polls if you guys are I'm wanting happy to, to try the very heavy book. The very heavy book, yeah. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not gonna lift up again. 
<laughs> no, don't do it, Charlotte. I wonder where we should draft this. I, yeah, we, we, we give people a few options. Because we'll need to we'll need to decide which system we're going to try, or you try one, I try yeah. one, and then we'll, then we'll have to decide which design to do, or I guess yeah. we can decide. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I found a few like that dress is quite nice. So, and if you're not already following us on Instagram, that's where we'll we'll try to do some stuff here on YouTube. But um, I'm at creative dot costume dot academy on on Instagram, and um, Charlotta is Charlotta. I actually put both our Instagram handles in the description again. So if you and for I imagine most of you follow us because you've come from Instagram, but right. if you haven't get over there, say hello, and we will be sharing more information. And of course, every Thursday you will be with Trisha for Tricky Thursday. I was gonna say, yeah, I have. Uh, um, so the last Thursday will be our live with Charlotta and I, but I do come out with a Tricky Thursday. I try to, unless other things are going on. Um, as far as other classes that I'm offering for free, that taking my time, um, have a free tricky Thursday video that will come out here. I'm starting to do them here on YouTube because I can do a longer form, like 10 minute long video. Whereas on Instagram, I have to keep it to a minute and a half. So, um, yeah, those tricky Thursdays will be coming out on my rake on my channel every week, um, here on YouTube too. Yes. And if you, I've got, Actually, at nine o'clock today, I'm going to start a giveaway on Instagram where you can win all my block courses. So you can try a different drafting system. As yes, well. you can try Charlotta's drafting. Yes. <laughs> and then we'll be right until next Thursday. So you can try that out as well. Or you can find us both on our um, memberships and our websites via our Instagram handles. Um, I can actually pop them in the description as well so people can find our websites. Yeah. We're but, all about pattern fun here. Yes. And, um, we're really excited for all of you guys who came and yeah. excited for the future lives that we're going to do yeah. and all that and we're going to do. Of course, if you, if you choose like a cheap system for next time, people could join in. If you Yes, that's if, true. Yes, that's yes, true. Yes, so, yeah. So let us know what you want to see. We'll, we'll get into a little yes. bit more live action next yeah. week, next <laughs> month. And yeah, if we did a did a more affordable system, then we could all do it. You guys could yes. do it along with us at home. So that might be something to consider. Yes, if there's anything you spot online, maybe like under under ten dollars, then we're happy to try it out. And yeah, all absolutely. So fun, wonderful, lovely to chat to you and um, to share. Thank you, everybody. For <laughs>